welcome everybody to Virtue's Rage right here on the bigvetobrand.com. And I am Virtue being joined by not Jargo, that's his Twitter handle, but Dr. Jargo, what's up, man? How's it going, man? It, I, I missed you last week. I had migraine, like a lot of computer work that day. And when I got home, I wanted to do the show like we normally do. It was about 5 or 5.30. I may mean, have even been earlier than that. And I was just, it was throbbing, man. So I took some Excedrin and took a nap and it, it wore it off. So that was good. Monday Night Raw has that effect on people. It could have been that for sure. <laughs> oh my God. I can't even say when I last watched all three hours of Raw straight through. Oh man, yeah. I I, uh, I did a show earlier today with my favorite Huckleberry, RBV. You can find us over at hittingthemarks.com and John Paz from the Two Man Power Trip. We do this show every week. It's called Who Is? And today we were discussing uh, who is the greatest SummerSlam performer? Who is Mr. SummerSlam? Shawn Michaels is Mr. WrestleMania. Who is Mr. SummerSlam? And I was like, damn, when is SummerSlam? Like, what's the card? I'm so out of the WWE bubble at this point. Roman and Cena and Goldberg and Lashley. And I think Rollins and Edge. So there are your three big matches. Yeah, and and I knew all those, but like I just like on a whim, I couldn't think of it because I, I keep up with WWE yeah. and what's going on. I just I cannot watch that product we'll probably seven do, hours a week. We'll probably do Charlotte versus Nikki Ash versus Rhea Ripley. This is just I don't know if these are official or they're just rumored. They'll probably do Bianca Belair versus Sasha. Um, AJ Styles in that giant Omos versus Riddle and Orton, I think, but I only knew the main matches. So, I mean, it, it's WWE. Now, you know? Not to spoil your stuff, you know, everybody can go check your um, show out there that you're going to be talking about Mr. SummerSlam. Off the top of my head, like I'd really have to go back and do research, but without doing research, I would say Bret Hart. That was our number one. It was anonymous. Okay. It was yeah, like, unanimous I, across the board. Yeah, I mean, because I even remember the one Summer Slam. I want to say it was '94, where it was him and Owen in the cage. Yep. I really feel like that could have been Owen's time to win the title because it was a cage match, so they could have kind of protected Brett. And then at Survivor Series or whatever ended up happening, Brett could have won it back, but they didn't go with that route. It never left Brett during that time. Yeah, it's crazy when you look back at the greatest matches in SummerSlam history, Bret Hart is in like three of the top five. I mean, there there, there was the match with Mr. Perfect, then there was the match with Davey Boy Smith at yep. Wembley Stadium, and then the matchup with Owen. So yeah, yeah. Bret, Bret won going away. We had Brock Lesnar, number two. Interesting. That's a, that's a good choice. I got to go check that out, look at some more SummerSlam matches since we're coming up to SummerSlam to see who else I'd put in that category. But off the top, I agree with those. All right, so the real reason I brought you here this week is so we were talking a little bit about AEW ticket sales. Now, I'm going to lay this out. Um, Since wrestling's been back, WWE's doing pretty good at ticket sales too, right? Fans are excited to be back. Um, I haven't really tracked their house shows, but like just their TV shows where fans are excited it's all kind of selling out, right? Or at least close to it. Now we know WWE sells their name. So they're definitely, especially the closer to the ring, they're super expensive, uh, probably overpriced. And AEW probably charges 20, 30, 40, 50. I would maybe ring. I don't even know if you can get ringside. Those might just be like for people that in the know, but I would imagine maybe a hundred bucks is the top. So to me, Right now, it's it's easy to get at least spending money to get AEW tickets. Now, they're a hot commodity because that fan base, right? How many people are watching Dynamite each week consistently the past few weeks? 1.1 million. Okay, you're, you're going and selling out five, six, seven, say 10,000 seat layouts. Duh, no duh. Like, I want to see them run a WWE schedule. And do all those house shows. And then, of course, not necessarily doing the ticket prices. Then I want to see how consistent they are. I get it. They're the hot thing. But before I go any further here, right, that's just me rambling. Basically, they're different. It's a different breed right now. Tell me your input here when we were starting to argue on Twitter about these AEW 
tickets at live events. Well, well, my point was, you say that like it's a bad thing. Like it's a bad thing that their tickets are affordable, you know, and and I don't view it that way. Um, To me, I I can fan, right? Well, even as a business person, I I mean, because to me, I would rather have an arena full of people paying for $50 tickets than have an arena that's three quarters of the way full for people paying $100 a ticket. You make more money, but the optics, the television production value, excuse me, and what AEW is trying to do, what they are trying to build, I think that the lower ticket prices for the sold out buildings is a really, really smart thing for AEW at this point. Like you said, WWE, they they sell themselves. They're selling the brand. You're going to see a WWE show. AEW, with fans in attendance, has really been around for about six months because the pandemic hit when they were only three, four months into their run of traveling around to all these different venues, establishing all these different fan bases. I think you start with the lower ticket prices and five years from now, the ticket prices are going up. I, I like that as the so brand gets hotter, there's see more supply the demand. Yeah, I, I, I see up. the graph, but I'm saying at this point right now, AEW having cheaper tickets, that just seems like a smart business move to me for the long term investment of building the company. So when I tweet that, right, and, I, and I'm on board with what you just said, especially now, let's fill up the arenas and down the road is. I mean, they're signing a lot of wrestlers. There's going to be more money they have to put into the business as they get bigger. They're going to have to get more back, right? And they're only running four pay-per-views a year, which they're doing well on those. But it is, it's an older school business model. They're not quite established like even WCW was yet. But when I tweet that, what I'm saying is there is a the cult mob fan base of AEW that does not want to hear anything else against them. And I'm not going to mention names. It's fans. It's dirt sheet writers. There is a narrative going out, putting this like brand of wrestling over as like the next big thing. And although it is the next big thing that we could have as an alternative to WWE, let's let it get there first. And it's just not comparable. Like I see they always tout, you know, well, we're going to sell out these tickets. Okay. Well, great. Arthur Ashe Stadium, that's a big deal for them for Dynamite. But I'm sure the tickets there overall from front row to top are a hell of a lot cheaper than what WWE's charging at Madison Square Garden. We can't really compare them because one company's here building and it's WWE. But yet those people that I like kind of take a dig at, they're the ones comparing this. And it's like, like, just focus on liking your brand instead of trying to make it seem better than WWE. Let them build. And a few years from now, then maybe fans can decide truly what is better. See, that's what's bothering me. Like 18 to 49 demo, right? I know there's always been demos around because the advertisers selling to specific age groups. But back in the day, you never heard like the Super Bowl, 100 million people watch it. You don't hear about demos when overall viewers are so huge because you just know then all the demos are through the roof. But now these AEW cultists are putting that on the pedestal because it looks good for them. And it's, that's just my problem. I don't mind AEW growing. I just wish that subset of diehards would let them grow without comparing them and and making me and my economic mind go ballistic when I see what they're trying to compare, it's apples to oranges right now. Am I wrong? Well, I, I guess it's all about perspective okay. because I, I think the problem is, I think you spend too much damn time on Twitter, Virtue. I think that's your problem. I, it's because... my outlet. I actually, believe it or not, you th- it looks like I do, but I do a lot, man. I got a shoot job. I play some video games. But when I'm on Twitter, you see a lot of it. So I think it's so spurts. My, my thing is, like, yeah, I, it's what I, do, man. I work in television. So I, the TV ratings are one of those things that I always follow. I always follow the demos, especially now when you look at WWE quarterly financials as those are released that because it's all public information because they're a publicly traded company. Every measurable metric that relates to fan interest for the WWE is down profit margins are the highest that they've ever been at any moment in time 
Why is that? And here's my quick, I'll let you finish. I feel that they're not selling to fans like maybe they should. They're selling to companies. You know, those companies, what they are, NBC Universal, yep. Fox. Yep. And that's why they are making so much money. It's the Fox TV deal. It's the NBC Universal TV deal. It's the Peacock deal. It's all televisions, rights. That's where all the money is, right? AEW, they still have to establish that brand to TNT, and you're not going to do that by, you know, only filling up three quarters of the United Center. If we got to eat five, ten dollars a ticket to fill up the United Center just for the optics of how hot this product is, just for the TV rights fees. I mean, because now it, you are exactly right when you said 1.1 million people are watching Dynamite every week, but the other number that is getting really big inside of the TV industry is the rating plus three and the rating plus seven. And what that is, is DVR viewership within three days and within seven days of the broadcast. And they're right up around 1.5 million people. So I, TNT is ecstatic with AEW because what did they have on Wednesday nights before a rerun of a Marvel movie that you've seen 800 times already. So like from a TNT perspective, this deal with AEW is just fantastic right now. And in two years, three years, they pay more for the TV rights. And then you boost up the ticket sales a little bit. And I mean, like it's all just, like you said, it's a wave, right? But we just Twitter, especially when they don't understand TV ratings, because I, I see the, the viewership number and the rating confused all the time, and it drives me absolutely yeah, I, that's freaking I, insane. I try to write it out in millions because of the viewer, because I know a rating is like a percentage or de it's it's a cal it's calculated of the. The rating is yeah. of all the people that were watching cable TV on Wednesday night, what percentage of them we're watching this TV yeah. show. And if you can get a 0. 0.5 in a 2021 climate, you're doing pretty decent, right? But you look back at these ratings from the Monday Night Wars and you're talking, you know, 8.6. And it's just like the ratings are in the toilet. The ratings are in the toilet all the way around. It's just the value of content right now to these content providers, whether it's you know, Warner Media, whether it's NBC Universal, whether it's Fox Broadcasting. Like if my speculation is, as I look at this entire NXT thing, right, is if this was any other company on the face of the planet, we would look at it and say they're liquidating assets, they're getting ready to sell. What is the WWE worth to NBC Universal at this point, 52 weeks a year of seven hours of original content. I mean, for Peacock, that's worth an awful lot of money. And this is why I hear all the time, oh, Sinclair should sell Ring of Honor. Do you know what Ring of Honor is worth to Sinclair Broadcasting? Yep. Way more than what they could sell Ring of Honor for just because of the amount of content that they don't have to syndicate because syndicating TV shows is freaking expensive. Is Impact in a similar thing being content for somebody? I know it's, it hasn't been doing that well with, with viewers, but is it like, are they Anthem? What's okay. Impact's bubble and Fight TV? Do they have a... Like, is their content worth something to someone like Ring of Honors? I I, I don't know how Impact Wrestling is making money. Oh, okay. I, 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 that's why I didn't know if you did. No, I genuinely don't because <laughs> Anthem Sports owns Impact Wrestling. They also own Access TV. True. All of the advertising that you see during Impact Wrestling is for other shows on Access TV. There's no TV rights fees because they're owned by the same company. Yeah. Like, I have no idea how this company is making money. It's it's not about the, the product itself or, or the talent that's there. I look at their business model and I just... I'm baffled how they're supposed to make any kind of money. Yeah, I thought it was me, but that makes sense now. It's like it's like a mystery right now. And yet they're clinging to life. So, you know, this whole thing where I kind of always, you know, the momentum word I get. And I, I get it. It's easy to say AEW has momentum because they're new, right? And they're in the second year. They had the pandemic is kind of like a, like a stalling speed bump. 
But is it is this narrative like because anytime AEW goes up, I see Raw and SmackDown ratings go up. The demo slightly goes up, their ratings slightly go up. And I just feel like it's a narrative. Or is this because, well, sure, WWE can show momentum in the same way you, that AEW is, but they used to be so much bigger and better. So they're only going up to still way under what they used to be. Is that maybe it? It's it's interesting because I mean I'm trying to figure this out, you know, to see what fan why people are thinking the way they do. The only property that I see dropping on any kind of a regular basis at this point is NXT. Um, because NXT has been hovering right around that, you know, 650,000 to 700,000. Yeah. They had a couple dips to 520, but I noticed that was when they went over the sci-fi. sci-fi. It was out of whack, but no, I like those numbers seem right. Uh, but in AEW there for a while, NXT, AEW, they were running neck and neck. And then at a certain point, AEW started climbing again. And now they've almost doubled to that audience to where you're getting 1.4 million viewers. When you look at the plus seven, you know, you're getting 1.1 million live. That plus Um, seven. Can we apply that to Raw and SmackDown too? anything that could be DVR? Absolutely. Okay. Just just to be clear. Okay. Yep. Yep. That's just basically across the board because there is actually research out there that just because you have DVR, it's like 82% of people when they're watching their DVR do not fast forward through commercials yeah. because they, they like that opportunity to get up and go to the bathroom or to, they're scrolling through something on their phone oh, and they're still DVR. hearing things <laughs> subliminally, right? Yeah. You know, so there there's more money in the advertising for the DVR plus three and plus seven numbers than what people really give it credit for. Right. And who can watch three hours of Raw live? I mean, my That's God. Dude, and it's just, like, I get it. Wrestling fans are passionate, and the newest flavor is AEW. Now, putting all that aside, you brought up NXT. Uh, Any guesses on what's happening here? Um, We've heard rumors, you know, Vince wants bigger wrestlers again. Um, Could be, you know, going back to the more FCW, Florida Championship Wrestling model of, like, a territory – work you know to get talent to grow talent what's happening here in your opinion i don't know if you've heard anything i haven't okay well let let me uh this is virtue's rage i'll turn it into jargo's rage here for a minute okay and and give you some very unpopular opinions nxt has been a colossal failure since its inception Nothing about NXT has ever been good as much as fans may or may not have liked it. NXT was developed to be a developmental territory. Now, yeah. Virtue, let's let's run through a little exercise here, all right? Because I know you're a sports fan. I'm a sports fan. I heard this analogy the other night, and I thought it was brilliant. Okay. You are the head coach of a high school football team. All right. And you're running, you know, Tampa two and you're running a shotgun up like fast motion offense in I'm high the, school in high I school. Mean, in, my, in my high school, was sweep left, sweep right. Anyway, <laughs> I'm the coach of the JV team. Yeah, I'm running wishbone and I'm running, you know, an all out blitz package on defense. Right. So when you get players for the main squad from the JV team, the JV team hasn't developed a goddamn thing because they can't play on the main squad. Who is, the, who is, what developmental talent, what talent that did not go through any independence, what talent that wasn't on national television already has went through the NXT system that was a homegrown talent that has been successful on either Monday Night Raw or Tuesday Night SmackDown. Who is that star? And that's a great point. There, are, We have a columnist over on No DQ, Tito, that has written about the NXT's failure. So this is not the first time I've heard this. And guess what? The successful wrestlers that you could have said that became homegrown stars through WWE, like a Roman Reigns, was before NXT. Really, yep. they were like the, the older style, like, the FCW. FCW. Yep. 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 The only one that I can think of 
is Baron freaking Corbin. And he was that's in the, the NXT bubble. Ooh, that's, that's the, the that's, biggest yeah. star that NXT has produced. Baron yeah. freaking Corbin. NXT has been a colossal failure. It's a money pit. It's been an absolute waste of all this I know they don't make the money, that's for sure. Other than, well, did they kind of make them a little bit of money when they got on USA? $65 million was their rights fees. But they were probably bleeding so much money into NXT all these years. That probably was just a break even at that point. Which, which is fine because, I mean, I understand you got to yeah. spend money in order to make money. You've got to pay to get this talent in there. But the, the real failure in NXT was when they said, we are not developmental, we are our own brand. No, you are still developmental. And exactly. you can't be developmental and your own brand at the same time. It Imagine, does not work. Right? They're trying not to be developmental. They're trying to be their own brand. And your call letters are NXT, which spells out subliminal next, as in up and coming. Yep. Yeah. And, and you know, they were, I know Enzo said that, there you go, there was one, like, in terms of selling merchandise and kind of being over, but, you know, he had his personal problems backstage and that didn't work out, but he was saying when he was in NXT, it was considered like an alternative, an alternative brand to the main roster, well, that doesn't, like, that doesn't mean, okay, well, then let's bump you to the main roster. If it's an alternate brand, it kind of stays its alternate brand. Well, and so, now, now yeah. we actually have an alternate brand. It's called AEW. Yes. And the presentation of it is different. It, it feels different. It looks different. It doesn't have that WWE polish. It, you're not constantly reminded that you're watching a WWE program it's a true alternative. And that was kind of the end of NXT. When they moved to the two hour format on USA Network, that to me was the quote unquote death of NXT. It's what just now it's catching now? up. Great, great points. What do you think happens now with it in a year from now? A year, we'll just say a year from now, heading into next year's SummerSlam, what's WWE doing with NXT or does it even exist? I think NXT exists okay. as a Florida Loop Performance Center, maybe on Peacock, but I do not think it is any longer on USA. I think USA cancels it. Gotcha. And you know what else I can see in the future? I could see, and it's it's only about halfway through. I don't know how long Fox has been on. Uh, have has had SmackDown. I don't see Fox bringing back WWE. However. I can see WWE selling SmackDown to NBC Universal. I mean, the thing with WWE, when you actually look at those financials, if you take away that TV revenue, they are in real trouble. They are in yeah. real trouble. And I, I, I think the smartest thing, and it sure looks to me, they're getting all those ducks in a row and whether it be Disney, whether it be NBC universal, whether it be Netflix, whether it be what, what is a property like that worth to a company like Disney? Because you hurt Fox, you take away their number one rated show on Friday night. You hurt NBC universal. You take away their number one rated show on Monday night. You're no longer running up against Monday night football. Hell, you might even get an off season for WWE, which is something that people have wanted forever. Like there's a lot of moving parts with this publicly traded company and stock sell-offs and liquidations. And I don't think WWE is in a very good place financially even though they're making more money than they ever have before, which That's is like true. the biggest oxymoron in history. And, you know, I know everybody's given like Nick Khan a lot, like the wrestling fans, because he's going in there working side by side with Vince from the business mind, cutting costs, right? And it's a lot of wrestlers. But if we go back to even the territory days, Vince McMahon was always notorious for bringing people in, using them, and then sending them back on their way and then refreshing it up. And sure, it didn't sound like you were getting released or fired. It was just, hey, I don't have any more work for you. And then some of them came back. And but now it's like they're ruthless, evil businessmen. I don't know. Just fan, fa fans know too much. Right. I mean, and I'm guilty of that because I know too much. But and we analyze it too much instead of just watching it and trying to enjoy it. And then it becomes 
a pseudo reality that the fans are themselves in the business or at least friends of these wrestlers. And it really just takes away from enjoying wrestling from when we used to just enjoy it. Hey, attitude era, golden era. I just watched wrestling. I didn't really care about what, you know, the ins and the outs. I mean, if somebody wasn't there, I kind of bought into the storyline why they weren't there. And boy, has the last 20 years really changed things. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just, it's the websites, it's the social media, it's the leaks. It's, you know, yep. I, I know people down in NXT. I know people on the WWE roster. I got friends of ring of honor. I've got friends at AEW and you know, the reason why they're still friends of mine, because we don't talk about wrestling. Yep. That, you, you know, know like we do the shows with Vito and I do getting color with him. And we talk about wrestling on men of business. Now remember when we really didn't, and I don't mind that because Vito's been in the business, but my favorite conversations with Vito, who's been in all the feds, is when we don't talk about professional wrestling. Right. When he came up here for an indie event that we were in together, but we went to the Cavs game and we talked basketball the whole night. We watched the Bucks beat the Cavs and we were like, could they win a championship? You know, three, four, three years before they did. That's the stuff, man. man right. That's a good, that's a good time. That's it. Uh, 27 minutes, man. Boy, we could talk about economics or wrestling probably for a couple of hours. Anything else on this week's Virtue's Rage, or should I sl say slash Jargo's Rage, that you would like to add? If not, well, I, do your I, ha I have a conspiracy theory. Oh, and I love we might, these. We, we might want to save this for next week, but... Let's do a, um, what do they call that? A foreshadow a or a, yeah, tease. a tease? What if the biggest name in the WWE would jump to AEW. I think there's a very, very real possibility John Cena ends up in all elite wrestling. Ooh. And I was thinking of 